all the best sports clips from around the world. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here? Because over here, I care about what you actually have to say. I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions, let's get into some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and it's turning into something truly, truly special. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we all are really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about none other than the man of the hour, the man of the season, the man of the year, Brock Purdy. Um, I, apparently, he made a statement to Nick Bosa saying, honestly, I could do better, which I think is really, really funny because I've been fighting with 49ers fans seemingly for the last month or so, but definitely within the last couple of weeks where they're telling me that how amazing he is and how unstoppable he is. People want to keep kind of uh, flagging me as a Brock Purdy hater, even though I've consistently said that I think he is a uh, really good quarterback and is doing very well. Obviously, he has some issues, and I think it's okay to point that out and not be considered a hater. Um, but I would say that he's now even admitting that he needs to play better, that he can do better, which is just undeniable, right? Like, he has not had two great start-to-finish playoff games um, these past games. Uh, yes, he's had some really high big moments and has been able to come through, but he's also had some really, really bad moments that um, ha that were either they were fortunate to get away with or they were just lucky that it wasn't worse. And again, Brock Purdy knows that and hence why he's making that comment. You know, he's not oblivious to it at all. And the other point thing that I wanted to point out on, because everyone keeps talking about in the comment section, I feel like I'm going insane with the Ayuk helmet catch that went off the defense for the Detroit Lions and he caught it. They were like, well, it would have been, it would have counted anyway because they threw a flag. They picked up the flag. Okay. They picked up the flag. There was no flag on that play. And people are saying, well, that's only because he caught it. And so they, that's why they picked up the flag. That's not how the NFL works. That is not what the NFL does. If they thought it was pass interference, they wouldn't have went up and picked up the flag. They would have just said, you know, pass interference, number 27, whatever his number was, number 27, defense, that penalty is declined, result of the play, touchdown. They wouldn't have just picked up the flag and said there was no penalty on the flag, or on the play, okay? Indisputable. And even Ayuk himself said that that play was luck. He literally said it was luck. He's like, God was with the, the 49ers that day. Um, and that a ladybug landed on my foot, which for those of you who don't know, when you have a ladybug, it's supposed to be lands on you. It's supposed to be good luck. So again, he literally admitted that it was luck. So I really don't understand why Ayuk, the actual player, the player who was involved in the play, who made the catch can admit that it was luck, but fans can't. I, I, I don't understand that. Honestly, why can't you just be like, yeah, that was lucky. And thank God that was amazing. Um, so I, I, I don't understand it. So I just wanted to point that out because people keep flooding the comments and saying that. And I, I just, I can't make sense of it. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what they say. We know Nick Wright is going to say that Brock Purdy needs to play better. Um, so I'm curious to see what kind of brew has to say with regards <laughs> to this as well. I love it. Yeah, I know. love yeah, it. We know. It's a little weird. Well, it, it, the, really? whole the whole it, thing is just, uh, do you think it was for the cameras? I, I think, or you think they caught? I, I think they were aware of camera. I mean, who yeah. is that? Is that the PR, the team the, PR? I, I don't, I don't know. It said Netflix, so I'm not, I'm not sure. The, but, but, but go ahead. Well, what's the, the question? Question was, what's Brock's ceiling? Well, first of all, like I said, I love this because <laughs> to me now, are they acting? I don't think they were acting, but okay. I'm, let's assume they were sincere. If they were acting, Purdy's the caliber actor you are, <laughs> which is. <laughs> hey, not I'll, good, I'll be, which I get excellent. that SAG. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a SAG. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That con, that check every okay. year. Um, <laughs> How much to me, for? this yeah, says one of those Bosa. Like 70, 75 cents? <laughs> no, nah, I said some okay. dollars. Okay, go ahead. Uh, to Sorry. me, this hundreds, actually. Oh, this no, says Bosa. No, it, it is. It no, is. No, Let him go. 250-something dollars. 250? Yeah, wait. I was good. Okay. All right. It doesn't have a bearing on your performance. <laughs> Bosa. You know hashtag that was reality high. Shout out. Brandon Broussard. Yeah. Bosa, to me, this shows that Bosa 
really believes in Brock. Yeah. Like, he's really impressed with what Brock Purdy does. This wasn't at a press conference saying the right thing for the no. media. Yeah, I'm going to back my teammate, of course. This was these two guys. He didn't have to go up to him and say that. Uh, All okay. right, so I like that. Secondly, I love Purdy's response. Because Purdy was like, when he's like, are you surprised you, you're this good? He, what, he ain't surprised. Purdy is not surprising. He was like, yo, it's part of the game. When I put on my shoulder pads, I believe I'm going to get it done. That's what I took. I believed I was this good at Perry High School in suburban uh, Phoenix. All right, that's what I got from there. Now, what's his ceiling? Yeah. You're going to like this, Nick. Mm. Hall of Fame. Okay. That is the ceiling. Will he reach it? We'll see. But that is the ceiling. Uh, if they win this, this Super Bowl, it's going to be fun to discuss. And even next year, they don't have to pay him next year. So let's even if they don't win it. But next year he comes back, has a similar year, maybe not even quite as good as this, okay. but plays well. Similar year, <clears throat> they're in the mix again. Maybe maybe they, he wins the Super Bowl at some point in his career. Then. How in the world is he not? We see he can put up numbers. Now, I'm not – look, I'm not – Mahomes obviously is a Hall of Famer. Jackson because of the – Lamar because of the two MVPs. Mm -hmm. Josh probably no. – Burrow. No, Josh he's Allen saying, probably. No, he's no, saying – I'm he's saying – no, I'm saying – what I'm saying is Purdy is not in the class of a Josh Allen, a Joe Burrow if he's healthy, where we're saying – they're, they they're going to be Hall of Famers. Yeah, they're going to be Hall of Famers. What okay. I'm saying is his this guy's ceiling, because of the way he wins, because of... Wild doesn't agree that Josh Allen is an MVP uh, or is a Hall of Famer. I, I don't understand why people don't believe that Josh Allen is an elite, amazing, unbelievable talent, and he's just had the unfortunate events of, of, of having... Um, being drafted by the Bills. I, I, again, I understand a lot of the Chiefs fans out there love Patrick Mahomes, and so Josh Allen is, is, is kind of a, a villain to some degree, but Josh Allen is amazing. And just wait until this next season, because a lot of people were also calling out Justin Herbert. Just wait until we see how amazing Justin Herbert is with Harbaugh. Just wait. Maybe it maybe not, might not be this season, but definitely within the next couple, and you're going to be able to be like... See how much of a difference having a true, great, offensive-minded head coach or just a true, legit offensive coordinator really affects quarterback play. So Josh Allen, is, is I don't understand how they could even argue that, quite honestly. Of his numbers, why not? And look at this. There's, this is Brock Purdy's numbers versus a Hall of Famer, oh. Drew Brees. First two years. Did Brees look like a Hall of Famer? He did not. Purdy's whipping him in everything. There are other Hall of Famers we could throw that up against. So, his so he's off to a great start. He's in a good system. Okay. You know, we'll see when he gets paid, like you said, what, what they have around him. But, yeah, that's his and you This stuff is silly, though, because under this logic, we could have taken, like, Nick Foles's Nick Foles, you guys remember Nick Foles, Super Bowl MVP winner. Uh, take his, like, first season where he played. Um, I'm not sure if he was a rookie, but it's definitely, like, it's the first time. Um, I, think, I think he came in for Vic, so it wasn't a full season. Um, but it was, like, a, a chunk. It was, like, 12 games or so, at least, whatever. And if you just took just that, you would be able to be, like, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. Look at this. Doesn't throw any interceptions. Look at his touchdowns. Look at his passer rating. Look at, you know, uh, yards per pass. You know, his record. All of that. So you can't, it's just too limited. You can't just be like, look at the first two seasons. You know, this was 16 games also for uh, Breeze. And, and again, it was also just look at the uniform. Look at the helmet. It's just such a different era of football. And I don't remember at all what those Chargers teams looked like. Who was, who was playing for them? Unless Drew Breeze was playing with five all-pro offensive players and they were also driven towards you know, offensive, pass heavy, you know, offenses. I think that's just, again, it, it, to me, these types of comparisons are, are kind of just silly. The, ga the game of football was different. Um, the rules were literally different and the philosophies were different and the players were different. So, and again, that's not to say that I'm not saying that Purdy can't be better than Drew Brees or that he won't be better than Bru Drew Brees or that his first two seasons isn't uh, incredibly impressive of Brock Purdy. But I just think that, like, if this is your argument and this is the type of thing that you're using to build your point, I think it's it's just it it looks better on paper than it actually is in reality. Like I keep saying, 
if this was anything else but sports and this was like medical data, we wouldn't even remotely compare this because we would be like, this is just, this data is collected under wildly different circumstances, okay? You're trying to figure out how well does this medication work in women, but you tested only in men. So this data is, we're, we're comparing not even apples to oranges, we're comparing apples to rocks, you know, at this point. So again, if you want to make the argument, that's fine. But I just think that this is not evidence to that argument personally. I think he can, That's his ceiling thing. from a player comp perspective is Breeze, right? Because you said that, I but then you got he, mad when I said no, it. No, I'd say he reminds me. I see a lot of Drew Brees okay. in him. But so I, I'm not going to say he he can be a Hall of Famer and be not quite as good as Drew Brees. Sure, yeah. But I think his ceiling, I, like I a will not be like it, it, If 15 years from now, he's a, we know he's going to be a Hall of Famer, even – 10 years from now. I'm not going to be surprised and y'all okay. going to be eating crow. That, that's fine. I, 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 I will be surprised if Brock Purdy's in oh, the Hall of Fame. You don't even think that's his ceiling? No, I don't think it's his ceiling. I have a great, I have a great answer, though. A I great... think... You know who I think Brock Purdy is right now? I don't know how you got how this is going to land with y'all. And I don't know if I 100% believe this. But this is what I was thinking. How do you guys feel about Brock Purdy being Eli... Manning okay people see Eli Manning as like not necessarily a Hall of Famer had some really big moments was very consistent um but they kind of see him more his, his whole Hall of Fame argument relies more heavily on him winning two Super Bowls um and watching him I actually just watched a couple hours ago of, of recording this you know the the final quarter of his first Super Bowl against Tom Brady and and that the crazy catch with Joe Buck giving a very lukewarm, uh, you know, commentating for that. I, honestly, I was just like, what? Why? How was he not freaking out? That was wild. And again, I think that's actually such a perfect example because what Eli Man Eli Manning had to escape. Eli Manning could have easily gotten tackled and sacked, and you know, there you go. That's the game they lose the Super Bowl. But he came up in a huge high pressure situation, evaded the pressure absolutely could have just gotten thrown to the ground somehow didn't miraculously didn't made some sort of crazy mobile throw that was like a good throw but also not a good throw but an amazing catch and it also was just very fortunate to be able to like work out for them right um and i think to some degree that's kind of how purdy's been successful at least in these last playoffs you know especially in the last game where it was like he could have gotten sacked and ripped to pieces, but then somehow evaded, somehow stayed on his feet, and then was able to rip off for a run, which really changed the game, or make an unbelievable throw. And if you only saw that final quarter for the uh, the, Gi the Giants versus Patriots game with Eli Manning, you would say Eli Manning's better than Patrick Mahomes. Seriously, if you only saw that quarter, you would say Eli Manning and Patrick Mahomes are on the same level, right? And I don't think anyone feels that Eli Manning is on the same level of Patrick Mahomes but go back and watch that corner that or at the very least watch that final drive and Eli Manning looks like one of the greatest quarterbacks we have ever seen in our entire lives and to me that's a perfect example of why we can't be so quick to jump to people and claim you know what their ceiling is are they hall of fame are they not are they booms or busts because granted a quarter is obviously a lot smaller of a sample size but so is only a season. So is only two seasons. So is only three seasons. You really need, that's what makes a GOAT a GOAT or in a Hall of Famer a Hall of Famer is the longer stretch period of time. The period, the ability to actually sustain high levels of greatness, to be consistent. That's what really makes these Hall of Famers Hall of Famers is their high level of play consistently, year in after year out. And that's what makes the Tom Brady's and the Patrick Mahomes's um, John Elway, Peyton Manning, all those players, that they competed at such high levels year in and year out. We've seen plenty of other quarterbacks have really amazing seasons, stretches of seasons, two seasons, three seasons. Again, Russell Wilson is a great example of this, and and he really he was kind of seen as a bona fide Hall of Famer. And now it's like, I don't know. You know, a lot of people are kind of debating, like, is he actually a Hall of Famer? I don't know now. And we've seen this with Derek Carr. We saw this with Carson Wentz. We saw this with, um, uh, you know, Dak Prescott, at least in the early in his career. He was looking like, oh, my God, he's going to take over the NFL, right? He was almost going to be like the next Patrick Mahomes in a lot of ways. He came out, like, hot and ready to go and like, whoa, 
And then, like, he kind of came back down to earth. And then he had, like, a really bad season with all these interceptions. And then the next season he did really well. But then in the playoffs he got smoked. And it's like, what do you do with that? Justin Herbert had one of the most amazing rookie seasons we'd ever seen. And then, like, he now came back down to earth. And it's like, well, is it his weapons? Is it the lack of coaching? What's the situation there? And you're always trying to make sense of all of these things. And that's where I think we are with Purdy. It's just... To me, I will keep saying that it's too early to tell. Nick Foles, another perfect example. Watch Nick Foles in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. And my God, you would say Nick Foles is better than Tom Brady. I mean, seriously, you would say that he is on the same level of Tom Brady, at least. Or on the same level of Patrick Mahomes. And obviously, he's not. He never was. So, it's just these sample sizes. I don't know what you really need. What is a legit sample size in the nfl it's definitely not one season and it's definitely not two seasons quite honestly my gut tells me it's got to be at least four or five seasons where and and you got and you got to see it with different casts of characters not obviously a completely new team but you got to see it without a couple of these big time players on the roster and seeing what happens or maybe a different coach a different coordinator to just start to give you a more complete picture um but i think right now Purdy is making a great argument for why he's a really, really good quarterback and, sh- and should be considered to be um, a good quarterback. But there's also really valid arguments as to why people are saying, whoa, 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 step on the brakes. Great answer. There's This is real analysis, no pom-pom waving, mm-hmm. and not trying to hold any priors against him. I think Brock Purdy's ceiling is Mark Brunel. So Mark Brunel was also a late-round pick. Mm -hmm. Mark Brunel was also a bit undersized. Mark Brunel also had early postseason success, didn't get to a Super Bowl, got to an AFC title game. Mark Brunel also did it on a team with a Hall of Fame left tackle in Baselli, great receivers in McCardo and Jimmy Smith, great running back in Fred Taylor, and was really good. He made three Pro Bowls, led the league in passing yards once, never was a guy you're like, is he the best quarterback in football? No, but had a nice six-year run where he was good every year. I think that's, and that, so that's, by the way, I guarantee you the Niners would sign up in a heartbeat for that from Brock Purdy. For a Mark Brunel, you know, adju- numbers adjusted to this era, if you will. But in where you have five or six years where he is. Numbers adjusted to this era. He finally admits it. This is the argument that I've been making. The numbers have to be adjusted. So that's why even just comparing the same seasons. From, like, when he was trying to compare it to Tom Brady. I know it's relatively this era. But Tom Brady essentially played in multiple eras in the NFL. So I'm so happy Nick Wright just said that because that has been one of my prevailing arguments throughout the start of this channel has been comparing eras is brutally difficult and they have to be adjusted. And even just comparing, you know, someone who's played in 2010 versus 2023 is just vastly different. So again, that was one of my big arguments of trying to point and compare Tom Brady's numbers to Patrick Mahomes' numbers in their first X amount of seasons that he keeps trying to compare them to. So Again, that's another point where Nick Wright always just picks and chooses when he wants to, um, you know, pick and chooses when he wants to accept a variable as part of uh, his argument, whether it helps or hurts his argument. Is consistently one of the six or seven or eight best quarterbacks in football. They would love that. And that is, so to me, that's his ceiling. I don't think Hall of Fame or Drew Brees is on the, the list of viable options. But I think Mark, I, and that is, I Again, a compliment, I feel. Mark Brunel had a hell of a career, multi-time pro bowler, and did it, at, you know, best utilizing the excellent weapons around him, was able to make some plays with his legs as well as Brock showed us. Never so th- in the MVP conversation, though. No, was but it? I also don't, I guess, Brew. Because I, I think, think you would have to admit, Purdy, whether you agree, you obviously don't agree with him being in the conversation. But wouldn't you admit, and we there's a clip online we, we talked about, when Purdy first became the starter, when Garoppolo got hurt. Wouldn't you admit, though, he has far surpassed your expectations? Yes. Okay. Yeah, of right. course. I mean, I, I your, yours too. Yeah, yeah I had no idea. What he's I mean. literally of course, surpassed I'm not everyone's be that expectations. Good. But I'm just saying that. he could continue I, to. Because I, I think he's going to get better, too. So I, don't just you? real quick on the – so I don't I – don't, 
He, I think he might get better as a player, and this will be statistically the best year he ever had. I think that is likely. I think because right now I feel the statistics are inflated by the talent around him, and I don't know that he's always going to have it. I also, though, think the MVP conversation part, we have to acknowledge that prior to this year, or last year, I don't know if it was last year, this year's the first time, there really wasn't a definitive MVP conversation right, at the end of the year because right. you no, only voted for true. one person. So would would peak Mark Brunel have finished fifth? You know, would he have gotten some fifth place votes? I'd that's have to fair. go back and look at some of the years. I think maybe one of the years. So I think that's a little different. Don't you think that Mahomes, he's not favored, but part of Mahomes' greatness and our confidence in Mahomes in this Super Bowl is because – He's been here before, and he has all this playoff experience. So when we talk about young quarterbacks, the fact that Brock is in the Super Bowl, just had his second championship, conference championship game, that he has a head start of development over Trevor, who played half a good yeah. playoff game, or any that, any other. these any CJ played great, but we talk about, wow, CJ had so that's not the real example. playoffs. So he has the head starts because um, – mentally honestly and again i think brock purdy though has passed uh the whole mental experience in terms of you know being able to handle the pressure being able to handle the moment being able to handle the adversity within the game and then the week to the week of the playoffs the even the weather um things of that nature that i think he's passed out with flying colors i think that's you know you, you can't even debate that if you want to debate his play why he's been successful all those types of things, that's fine. You know, I think those are worthy debates and understandable. But you can't debate his mental fortitude because he has proven that at this point from my uh, viewpoint. Um, he's literally played better than uh, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'm trying to think of who else has really fumbled the, the ball in, in in kind of their earlier career of, of playing um, in big games. And so... And the truth is that there is only a handful of quarterbacks that have been able to answer the bell um, in these huge, intense moments or, again, come back. There's nothing harder than coming back from adversity in the biggest moment, right? In the Super Bowl or the AFC or NFC championship game, right? And so that's why, again, I see Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, um, Josh Allen, and I just really don't know if there's any other quarterbacks. And now you could add Brock Purdy to the list of quarterbacks who have truly been able to step up in incredibly important, incredibly high pressure, do or die, win or go home or win it all situations at the highest levels, right? At the most pressure cooker, intense moments of the playoffs or Super Bowl. And again, either self-inflicted because of throwing an interception or a fumble or whatever, or just playing great, you know, 90% of the time. So, and now you have to add Brock Purdy. You can't add uh, uh, really Trevor Lawrence to that. I know he came back, but, uh, you know, that was that, that was really more about uh, the Chargers than anything um, than just Trevor Lawrence's brilliance, quite honestly, especially when you throw four, what was it, four interceptions, I think it was, like something outrageous. Um and, you know, you can't you can't extend that to Dak Prescott, right? Because Dak Prescott has not proven that. Dak Prescott has not bounced back and faced true adversity. And in this big, high-level moment, like a Super Bowl, NFC Championship game, or wherever, or just, you know, completely lit the show up and said, I am here, I can handle this pressure. Lamar Jackson has not proven that. I know he played a good playoff game, but that's that pressure is not the same as the AFC championship game or Super Bowl. It's just not. It's 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 a different especially going up against a rookie quarterback and a young up and coming team. Now do it against a top dog, right? Do it against the Chiefs. Do it against the 49ers. Do it against uh the Bills or the Bengals, the Patriots obviously, but the Patriots back in the of the old days. You know, you have to do it against the true best and the elite and do it in the moments that matter most. And so right now like I said, I really only see it as and again, it doesn't mean that they always come up big, but the fact that they actually have the ability to come up big and has proven that they could come up big. And to me, it's really, and I'm not even saying that these are necessarily the best quarterbacks in the NFL necessarily, although you could definitely make that argument, but it really is Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, uh, Joe Burrow, 
Oh, and Matthew Stafford, right? That was the other one that someone called me out when I said made a similar statement, I guess, and, tech, and Matthew Stafford as well. Matthew Stafford's a little, I forget Matthew Stafford also just because he's near the end of his career and he, I don't think he's in his prime anymore. So it's just like a, a little bit harder to kind of use him as a as a reference point, quite honestly. But um, yeah, that's the way I see it. And, and again, I think mentally though, Purdy has proven that whether his skill set can continue to continue to grow and get better and and stay elevated that's a completely different discussion entirely for me i'm really curious to see how brock pretty plays in the super bowl you know if he plays shaky because again he played shaky in the last two games but he was able to still come up big i don't think brock pretty will have the luxury of being able to play shaky against the chiefs and still be able to come up big I think that would mean that the the only way that would be possible is if the 49ers defense is just absolutely shutting down Patrick Mahomes in the offense, which that is obviously no easy task to do. But what do you all think? What do you think of Brock Purdy's ceiling? Do you think Brock Purdy, um, you know, how high do you think he can go? Do you think what Nick is saying um, is a more accurate representation? Or do you think Brew and Drew Brees' opinion is more accurate? And also, what do you think of mine? Eli Manning. That's where I'm, again, that's a tentative example, but what do you guys think about that? Do you think that there's any truth to that? Would love to hear your thoughts on this one. Please let me know your comments below. Um, and please don't forget to subscribe. As I said, we are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really helps with the visibility and the algorithm. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much and see you next time.